Yes, I can see you and they can see you. So, this is Michael Goldstein Hi. calling in from New York. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you were all this morning with me when we had this brief session, and I saw some of you uh, during the, uh, the fair. Um, I think I want to do this question wise. So, if you have questions, please tell where you live, where you live, so where you situate, what your question is. And me and Michael together will try to do our best to answer it. Okay? Is that okay with you, Michael? Excellent. Okay, I'm going to put you on a bigger screen. Okay, who wants to go first with questions? Oh, it's always scary. Yes. <laughs> okay, how do you start the process, Michael? Well, everybody, when everybody comes from any country, you must start the process in your country. Sometimes that takes a long time. Sometimes a short time. So you would be having a home study and being approved by your government and being trained to adopt. Okay. For the Netherlands, because I know you're from the Netherlands, you go to adoption.nl and there you can apply for a BKA number. And from there it takes about a year at this point before you are with us to start your adoption procedure. And like I explained this morning, Michael, it takes between two weeks and two years. And the average uh, currently is 8 to 10 months with a new name. Okay. More questions. There are also people here that don't live in the Netherlands, but live in Belgium. Can you, uh, do you have any experience with Belgium gay couples adopting? Uh, we had one experience a very long time ago, but then um, the, I will use the word in the government a very long time ago, they uh, stopped doing U.S. adoptions. Uh, because they weren't sure how it worked and uh, didn't believe as they, I think they used the word tummy babies, meaning working with pregnant young ladies um, was was feasible for their goals. Yeah. We are now working with uh, Pet Klein and we are hopefully in the next, I would say, month or two or three, okay, we'll get the approval to start one or two pilot projects. Uh, so the idea though is still, okay, if you are from Belgium and it's not going to be in the U.S., um, I mean, you're not in that pilot project or it doesn't work, okay, you still want to get approved if you're thinking of adopting. So it's the same process that you would apply to the Belgian uh, social, I think they call family services, and you would apply and begin your adoption approval process. Okay. Yeah, but that's going to take you a long time anyway. Okay. Or has, anybody, to Holland? has anybody who started that process? Stop. I don't know. Are there people living currently in Belgium that started this process in this room? Or no? No, no. no. Uh, Are still uh, orientating? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there people from other countries that want to ask questions on how it could or could not work? Yes. That's French people. Uh, the French people can adopt in the U.S. if they have the agreement from France. In France, we are working with two French adoption agencies uh, on another sort of experimental project. France, the France, the, uh, uh, let me take one step back. Okay, uh, uh, many countries, okay, if you're in the Hague, which I guess you all are, okay, have a central authority. That central authority, when that minister is the, per is the group that decides what kind of adoptions and what countries you can adopt from. France's decision, according to French law, you cannot adopt a baby. So which means that we have, you must, must be adopting from U.S. foster care or from an orphanage in another country. So we are working with two agencies, but that is just beginning and that is only going to work with children in foster care, which will be very difficult and very few at a time and you're talking about probably a child that's at least five to eight years old okay so, so that's the situation in france for adoption okay sorry to hear that by the way okay other questions yes um which age age you must be uh till which age you can adopt so which age you're from holland so 40. Yeah. So 40. yeah then you can adopt a baby um uh, no uh, difficulties uh, and if you're over 40 it's still possible but we have to talk about your openness that uh, openness then and what you're willing to accept because there are, are uh, exceptions to the rules possible yes but for you it's not a problem <laughs> okay 
other questions? Um, can I interrupt for a moment? Yes, of course. Hey, um, I'm just going to, when you said sorry about adopting children from foster care, um, I will use the wording, we, we do have 100,000 children yes, in foster care correctly. ready to go, meaning that parental rights are terminated, there's no risk, there's no cost to those adoptions either, except maybe you know, a couple of thousand dollars. So it is a route that should be working soon. That would be great. But, but yeah. it would be like adopting from another country uh, different than the, the U.S., mm -hmm. what we call the private adoptions where the birth mother chooses. It would be uh, sort of going online and choosing the child that's actually online. So yes. if you know if people that may want to adopt older children or they're aged out, like in the Netherlands, um, you can go to adoptuskids.org. So uh, you, you can see the children available right there. So. Yeah. I didn't mean sorry, uh, for, but I'm right. sorry because I know it could take a long time before the process is actually working. Yes, that, yeah. that so, is correct. Yeah, so that takes a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, you wanted to ask a question, right? Yeah, as a school of self-standard loves it alone, give up to this kind of skill, can be more The question is, is there a difference if you are adopting alone within a couple or as a couple? Are there less possibilities or more possibilities either way? Um, well, let me talk first about the birth mother, okay, who makes the choices here. And it's, it's interesting that our gay dads, uh, since there are all men and the women uh, in the room there, uh, tend to, uh, I'll use the wording, uh, be chosen faster in, in a, just a psychological perspective that the birth mother is going to be the only mother of the child in a case like yours. And we find that our gay men very open to... Uh, talking to the birth mother afterwards and sending pictures and even visiting sometimes. So now, going back to the question is, I'm not sure how Belgium is going to approve you yet, since none of you have gone through the approval process. Um, there are countries that approve gay men as a family unit, and you are both approved. Uh, like in Holland, for example, you know, it's going to be one of you is the approved person. but. Then when we get here, uh, the U.S. actually processes adoptions by individual state level. And there are some states that allow two men to adopt. There are some states to allow only one man of a couple to adopt. Uh, singles can always adopt anywhere, so that's, that's not an issue if you're actually single at the moment anyway. And then, then with gay marriage coming up also, that complicates things and makes things easier in some states. So it will, it will get clearer later as you're actually in the process and we know which state the child's coming from. Okay, but for the birth that, mother, you... Does you, that answer the question? Yeah, and I think what is also important for you to know is that as, uh, for the birth mothers, you are, of course, a couple. So, you bent als een stel, ga je dat proces in en maak je je boekje en word je voorgelegd. Dus het is niet zo dat je dan alleen adopteert. Oké? All right. Other questions? And need for information. Yeah. Two questions. Yeah. Um, two questions. Were the kids also screened? All of them. Yeah. Um, the, uh, as you build up the background of the kids, and yeah. Um, the question is, are what's known about the background of the children? Um, that depends on the case that you're matched to, and of course, what you're open for. If you have a very limited openness, so um, you don't want children that are exposed to drug use or medication use or uh, social economical problems. Um, then you have lim limited resources. Um, it's not impossible, but limited resources. And as far as prenatal care, most of our mothers do have prenatal care, but not all. Right, Michael? That, that is correct, but to, to go into, it's, it's a little different again than adopting a child from an orphanage mm -hmm. where the child was abandoned. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you ask about the information, it's much more information than you would get from probably any other country yeah. in, in that perspective. And over the years, you know, um, my wife and I have been doing this for 30 years now, uh, we really find our birth mothers very open with the backgrounds, because remember they're choosing you, so how can you be the right parent for the baby if you don't know everything? Yeah. Uh, but, like Sam was saying, some of that information is relatively scary. And, um, as we get that, and we, and we want a child that's healthy, and I'll use the wording, our birth mothers don't, are not trying to get pregnant, obviously. Okay, they get pregnant, many of them don't know they're pregnant for a very long time. 
okay, meaning three, four, or five months sometimes, and they're young. I won't ask all of you what you were doing when you were 17 or 18, okay, mm -hmm. but you know, they're out drinking and partying and uh, sometimes using marijuana. So I'll, I'll call it most of the cases we have are of lesser type of exposure. And marijuana or drinking. Um, we do have some cases of extreme drinking and extreme cocaine use and things like that. But the good thing about working with the birth mother is that we'll know all that information. Yeah. So then you can make your choice and nothing obligates you when you're going through an adoption process or, you know, or a surrogacy. I know the big conference is a lot about that. Uh, as you get the information, nothing obligates you. Does that answer that? Yeah. 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 Okay, so you will know a lot about the background of the mother, uh, both socially, emotionally, and often there's still contact with the birth parents. In my particular adoption case, we still are in contact with the, the parents of my oldest son, and that means for us that we travel back each year, meet them, and also give him a sense of the roots that he uh, has. And I find that to be a very positive thing in USA adoptions. Right, Michael? Absolutely. Yeah. Question. Uh, yeah. In the, in the USA, um, uh, uh, birth mothers have uh, like a legal right to change their minds the first week or two weeks. No, that depends on the state again where you're yeah. adopting from. And correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. Um, it, it depends on the state you're adopting from. Once there is a signature, it's irrevocable. And how long that period is, is depending on the state that you're adopting from. For okay. instance, in Florida, it's 48 hours to three days. Yeah. And then she can only change, she can go to court, because she has that right, but only if she can prove that fraud or duress. Um, and because we are work, working with Hague accredited agencies, such as Michael's, and um, they have very high ethical standards, that's not, not the case. So out of a thousand adoptions, that happens? And we haven't had that once, right, Michael? So when the first mother changes her mind after she signs? We had one case, one yeah. Case. Yeah. The, one from, the one from California. Oh yeah, but that wasn't the birth mother, that was the birth father. That okay, was the birth father, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's going to bring up another question. Yeah. That's so another that's question. That's question. Yeah. the question yeah. before it comes up. Yeah. Uh, the birth father rules are also dependent on which state we are in. Okay? But even over 30 years, for example, we've only had six birth fathers that have ever tried to get their children back. And even in that California case, the birth father did not get the child back, remember? No, I know. No, he just wanted to have a say, and that, that was the, that's also the sad thing. Most of the time, the, the fathers are not even in the picture. Um, but if, and if, if they can't hear me talk about the birth fathers, though, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that depends on the state. That depends on the state, uh, yeah. Okay, other who, questions? Who would be the other party in that trial? In that trial. Is that the agency or the No, that would be you as an adoptive okay. parent. Uh, the question is who would be the other party in the trial in a trial if in, in case in rare case that happens. Mm -hmm. um, okay, three minutes. Thank you. Hush. <laughs> um, that would be you. So you would go to court, which is very undesirable because that's something that you have to explain to your uh, to your child later on. But again, it rarely happens. It rarely happens. So um, that would not be my biggest concern entering the adoption in that process. Yeah. Okay, Michael. Any more questions? We have three minutes left. Okay, you can always send us an email even though you're not from Holland and we will try to do our best to guide you further into this process if this is an option that you would like to explore. And I'm sure Michael will also be available for questions, right? To email? Michael's very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Very serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to be We're gonna try to be uh, <laughs> Okay, are there any more questions to ask Bosco? No? no? Okay. Well again, send us an email. The door of type of this is gonna file from five years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was um, uh, the question is that the period in Holland oh, is not it's not no, no longer no, that's not longer the case. We have a decline in uh, the number of prospective adoptive parents applying to adopt. Uh, so that means that the process speeds up and it takes about a year to 15 months to come at our agency and then depending on how fast you are chosen yeah. to parent, um, it's between uh, two weeks. We have had uh, several gay couples that were chosen that fast even before they could breathe. They were <laughs> uh, flying off to the USA, uh, but we also have couples that took a bit longer. Is it an and the 
gaan met aan het zitten of we kunnen wil schrijven. No, we have we call that the mediation. We have like 30 or 40 people uh, parents starting process each year, and we plan to place if you can plan because this is nothing that you plan, but we expect to place between 30 and 40 children. This year uh, we have placed already 25 children. Okay. So yeah, okay, and 30% with gay couples. That's also the, yeah. the number of people entering the process. So. Any more questions before he runs in and says you have any more hands? Okay, well, send us an email and uh, we'll help you as much as we can. Okay? Good luck on the journey.